In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the primary or the primary immune deficiency syndromes, and so this one is the common variable immunodeficiency syndrome. It's a heterogeneous group of disorders. Um, heterogeneous means that it has a lot of uh, well, it has several different starting points, different pathology, different pathogenesis, if you will, but the characteristics of the disease all end up being the same. And so you have hypogamma globulinemia, so you have a low gamma globulin, globulin count in the blood, and you have an impaired antibody response to infections or to vaccinations, kids that can't uh, maintain vaccination, and they have an increased susceptibility to infections. So the, there's clinical manifestations that are similar to XLA. What are those? It's recurrent bacterial infections, uh, acute and chronic pharyngitis, sinusitis, otitis media, ear infections, bronchitis, and pneumonia. So kids that have recurrent type of these infections, or not kids, sorry, young adults here, uh, that have these types of infections that are recurrent you might think common variable immunodeficiency. Uh, male and female, they're both affected equally, and it's much later than XLA or most of the other primary immune deficiency syndromes in the 20s and 30s. And the Ig deficiency is variable, and so the normal numbers of mature uh, B cells are you know they're normal so these mature B cells here right here they're the normal count the problem is is these guys here are absent there's not as many uh, there's no plasma cells so there's a, a problem here with these mature B cells being switched over to plasma cells differentiating and secreting antibodies so the defective antibody production has been variable uh, you know, it's attributed to the intrinsic B cell defects, uh, deficient T cell help, or excessive T cell suppressor activity. So the mutations in B cell receptors for certain growth factors or in molecules involved in T cell, B cell interactions. They're not exactly sure exactly what is going on here, but here are some ideas. Next we have the isolated IgA deficiency. It's the most common, most common of all the primary immune deficiency diseases, and IgA deficiency affects one in 700 white individuals. And IgA, in, remember that, is the major Ig in mucosal secretions that are involved in the airway and the GI tract. So most individuals with this condition are asymptomatic, but because of the weakened mucosal defenses, that predisposes the patients to recurrent sinopulmonary infections and diarrhea. So they have problems with the airway and GI tract because the Ig uh, a is in mucosal secretions. You have, uh, this is an, kind of an unexplained association with autoimmune diseases. Some patients have autoimmune diseases. And the pathogenesis involves a block of the terminal differentiation of IgA secreting B cells into plasma cells, kind of like the, the last uh, condition we talked about. And IgM and IgG subclasses of antibodies are present and in normal or even supranormal levels. So this is a picture of an immunoglobulin, an IgG, and so IgM and IgG, they're uh, present, they're in normal abundance, but this, for some reason, this IgA, IgA deficiency, they just don't get the job done. Next, we'll go to the hyper-IgM syndrome. So Remember that normal immune responses to protein antigens, IgM is kind of the first to be secreted, followed by concentrations of IgG, IgA, and IgE antibodies. So the, what's wrong here is the IgM producing B cells, the B cells, uh, they can't turn on the transcription of genes that encode other Ig isotypes. 
So patients with this hyper IgM syndrome, they produce a normal or even supernormal levels of IgM. So they lack the ability to produce the IgG, IgA, or IgA isotopes. So if I have a plasma cell here and it's normally secreting IgM antibodies, sometimes inside there's the isotype class switching inside this plasma cell. Well, they'll start secreting IgG or IgA or I. GE. So these plasma cells, they can't do that. They can't isotype switch to uh, according to these different types. So they just secrete the IgM. So that's why you get normal, but even sometimes supranormal or hyper IgM levels. So the underlying defect is the inability for T cells to induce B cell switching. So remember that this is a plasma cell but this uh, before it's a plasma cell it's a B cell B cell what the T cell does is it come and helps this B cell do the isotype switching and so then the B cell can turn into the plasma cell and secrete all of these antibodies so the most common genetic abnormality is the mutation of this CD40L gene. And so this gene is located on the X chromosome, so we see that 70% of all cases is X-linked. So male patients with this X-linked form of hyper-IgM syndrome, what happens is they have reoccurrent pus-forming infections. So that's and that's due to the low levels of this IgG antibodies because the IgG help fight off these pyogenic microbes that cause these infections. So these patients are susceptible to a variety of intracellular path pathogens um, that are normally combated by cell-mediated immunity, namely pneumocystis gervichi, formerly called pneumocystis carni. So here is this B cell and here is this T cell. Remember that this T cell um, helps uh, activate this B cell to do isotype switching. So instead of IgM, it isotype switches into AgG, AgA, and AgE. But it cannot do this. It cannot do this because of this CD40L little protein that sticks out the T cell. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. So then this B cell can't get this isotype switching. Next, we'll talk about thymic hypoplasia, D. George's syndrome. D. George's syndrome is a congenital defect in the thymic development. So the thymus, here is the larynx, the thyroid on the back side, the four parathyroid glands, you have the trachea here, and then you here you have the thymus in between the lungs. So this thymus is underdeveloped. And so as a consequence, you have a, def a deficient T cell maturation, and the T cells are absent in the lymph nodes, spleen, and peripheral blood. And in infants with this defect, they're extremely vulnerable to viral, fungal, and protozoal infections as common in these primary immune deficiency syndromes. It's usually uh, children that are affected as their maternal immunoglobulins and get depleted. So patients are also susceptible to infection with intracellular bacteria and that's because of this T-cell mediated immunity. These cytotoxic uh, 8 plus lymphocytes, you know, they can't really uh, destroy this bacteria that gets inside cells. They can't destroy that cell that's infected internally so that's why they kind of get the intracellular bacterial problems. B cell and serum immunoglobulins are generally unaffected. So the de de developmental malformation uh, usually it affects the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches in the development in embryology and so these structures these third and fourth pharyngeal pouches, they give rise to the thymus, the parathyroid glands, and portions of the face and aortic arch. So the parathyroid gland hypoplasia 
might also occur and if that does that record that responds to low calcium and so you get hypocalcemic tetania and you can also have midline developmental defects because of this third and fourth pharyngeal pouches as the fetus and embryo are developing in the uterus. So transplantation of thymic tissue has successfully treated some of these infants. So that's kind of cool as you can uh, give them a thymic transplant and that has helped these these infants with these par partial defects and this uh, immunity problem it may improve with age just kind of spontaneously.